Hey friends, it's Becky here and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to a new video. I am very hyper today for several reasons. The first one being that it's sunny and I finally have enough light for filming. Second of all being that I'm planning to film a couple videos now and I'm hoping it will go well and I'm very excited about those ideas, so that's another reason. And then the third one, I'm going to Kaylee tonight and I've been buzzing about this for past two weeks, so if I'm a little bit over the top, just sorry, bear with me. Anyway, what I'm doing today is to do my November wrap-up or non-fiction November wrap-up because I'm still having a few pages left in one book but I decided to include it in here because I don't think I will have that much time to film in very close future and I don't want to wait for another month to film monthly wrap-up. So what I'm gonna do now is to introduce a couple books to you which I read over the course of last month because I did create my non-fiction November TBR video which I will link up here if you would be curious but at the end I ended up reading quite different books and I skipped a couple of books from my TBR. And one little side note I wanted to say, uh, so many of you messaged me when I posted this video and you said uh, Tattooist of Auschwitz is not a non-fiction. Thank you very much for that. I know the reason why I included it in that video is that because I think I did not really realize, um, like I knew obviously it was an, it was not a non-fiction, but because it has been on my TBR for quite a while, it was based on a real situation well, no matter how much uh, percentage of it was true or it wasn't. And for some reason, I just wanted to read it in November. And because I was doing my nonfiction November TBR, I just included it there and it did not really click to me that you'll probably think that I think it's a nonfiction. Anyway, without further ado, I'll just speak about the books which I already read. And the first one I will start with is actually not a nonfiction necessarily, but I wanted to include it here because I forgot to mention this in my previous month wrap up. And that book is this one. It's a collection of poetry called Watering the Soul. Oh, sorry, no, The Way Back Home. The Watering the Soul is the other book from the collection. So The Way Back Home is the book by Courtney Peppernell who is one of my favorite authors ever because she's doing absolutely wonderful books with a poetry and this is my sixth book I read by her I believe and it was great as always but I would say if that makes sense that if like all of her books are five stars for me out of five but if I would do some sort of like list I think that this one would be on the sixth place out of six books if that makes sense still enjoyed it very much but um, I think somehow of her other books I enjoyed a little bit more the reason being that it was still very lovely and it was beautiful and the messages she was sharing and the themes and everything however as she said in the preface of this book she wrote this during lockdown uh, during the COVID when the, when the the worst uh, sort of like lockdown started and was happening and the way she was writing about those times for me it was a little bit triggering because in this time I was also going through something different um, in personal life besides all the COVID madness and reading this is it kind of reminded me of those memories so I was reading it but I was struggling a little bit if that makes sense but I do not want to discourage you because I think that there are so many people who can genuinely enjoy this although being it a little bit heavy topic for me but that's just me so uh, maybe if you are curious just give this a go because it's stunning and I mean the cover absolutely absolutely wonderful so that was my first book and now finally let's speak about nonfiction. So the first book of my list was absolutely anticipated read, however I must say I was quite disappointed at the end and it's this book called The Island of Dreams by Dan Boothby. You know how much I wanted to read this book because it's about Scotland, it's about Isle of Skye and it's about this man Dan Boothby who was always searching for his home because he felt like he could not really belong anywhere and until he found this place in Scottish islands in uh, Isle of Skye and up in the Highlands that's when he finally felt that he belonged somewhere so I was very excited about reading this and I did enjoy a lot about um, reading about you know the descriptions of the nature and the setting in Scotland because I live for it right now especially um, and I really really enjoyed these parts however there were some things which bothered me a little bit about this book the first one being that um, quite big majority of this book is also talking about Gavin Maxwell who is this Scottish explorer who used to live in the same place as Dan Boothby lived and he sort of like followed him because he was something like his um, hero let's say someone who did travel through Scotland who did live in these places who had his life with authors 
and uh, basically he was very much trying to um, be like him in many ways and find this not solitude but sort of like peace uh, rather in this same places and then Boothby is a writer and during the course of this book he was also trying to write a book so that's also what this story is about it's about him searching for his home and trying to make the life uh, <coughs> excuse me, trying to make the life uh, in these places and befriend the people living there and also try to watch some authors and find some authors as well whilst writing a book. Um, so the first thing which bothered me a little bit was that I felt like the story itself of Gavin Maxwell was kind of like prevailing in, in this book, which on one hand I'm like, okay, it's interesting, it's additional information. However, if I really wanted to read a book about Gavin Maxwell and his life, I would probably buy a book about Gavin Maxwell and his life, if that makes sense. So that was the first thing. The second of all, the writing style did not really fit to me, I did not enjoy it that much and the last thing was, which is kind of interesting, because this is obviously a memoir, it's a non-fiction and it was written from the author's point of view and because a lot of, of this book he's also speaking about his struggles to write a book and then also to you know, find the place on the earth for him. I think that I could feel from the writing sort of like a little bit of annoyance and anger as well and it really distracted me. I don't know if it was just me and it was a very strange experience because usually when you read different fictional books you sometimes do have unlikable characters but they are usually written with the idea of being unlikable but when I read memoirs I never really met with the fact that the author himself for me would be unlikable character if that makes sense. So. Um, um, yes, I gave this book three stars. I did enjoy reading it a little bit, but I don't think it's something I will pick up again and I was hoping that it could be one of those books I would be from time to time rereading just for pleasure, but probably not. <laughs> Right, so speaking about Scotland, I will mention another book which I read and that I enjoy much, much more and it's called The Outrun by Amy Liptrot. And some of you mentioned this book to me already because I mentioned that I have the second part of sort of like sequel of this book here because my flatmate has it in library, but you said that you think I will enjoy the first one more. I did not read the second one yet, however, I did love The Outrun and for me, I think that that's what what, what was I expecting from the previous book, The Island of Dream? I wanted to felt like that about that book, if that makes sense. So in this book, Outrun is basically again memoir non-fiction about Amy who was born in Orkneys in the Scottish islands up in the north and she describes her life there on the farm with her parents who later got divorced and her father who was living with severe bipolar disorder and he was hospitalized several times actually also during the day when she was born that's how the book starts so it's very interesting and she's talking about her life there and how she always felt like she wants something more so she moved to London and she was trying to live her life there however that was the place where she started to struggle a lot with addiction from alcohol and then basically got to like a rehab center and she's speaking very much about the whole part of her life which is about this um basically trying to get out from the addiction and then relapsing and then going back to Orkneys and trying to find herself there again with all the nature and animals and for me this was absolutely wonderful experience because the writing style itself it was beautiful it felt more like a fiction than non-fiction like something was constantly happening it was fast-paced I did root for the character of, well character for Amy herself the author um, I was hoping that everything will go well for her because she really seems like very incredible person and she also speak very openly about this addiction and about her struggles and also what she's been through when she broke up with her boyfriend or well when he broke up with her because of her addiction so it's a very personal story and then what I love the most is that the really a big part of the book takes place in Orkneys and uh, she describes so beautifully the life there, like the animals and nature and all the, f you know, flowers and life there. And it's something truly wonderful. And it also filled with so many different facts uh, just about the country itself or the history of the place. And then even like from geology, geology geographického like geology point of view like how the literally like the the islands were created from 
you know like scientific point of view it was absolutely wonderful so highly recommend you to give this book a go if you would like to and I'm definitely gonna read the sequel as soon as possible so they just started to I don't know if it's cutting the grass or something but the noise is getting very loud and I can hear it very clearly so I'm just hoping you cannot if yes I apologize but I also wanted to mention to you some other things because as I was you know reading about Scotland and stuff I also do love to listen to different podcasts and watch different you know TV shows which are more of like documentaries and I wanted to to mention two things which I was listening and watching during non-fiction November and the first one is a TV show called Scotland Sacred Islands with Ben Fogel and in this TV show he is exploring different islands um, in Scotland and it's absolutely wonderful it's so relaxing the landscapes are so beautiful it gives you so many information and it's interesting because he's also searching like it's not just a documentary about the places but he's also trying to discuss the idea of let's say Christianity or the religion or different point of view people living on the island how what kind of relationship they have towards faith so it's very interesting and then the second thing I wanted to mention is a podcast called wild for Scotland which I discovered quite recently well podcast I discovered quite recently but the author of the podcast she's also having her blog and she's also um, posting different uh, content on Facebook and Instagram and I will link all the basically links to the description down below if you would like to see it and she's absolutely absolutely lovely she gives you a tips where to go for a day trip to Scotland or even like longer trips and she really explores the Scotland itself as a whole country so it's really wonderful and in this podcast she's also talking about different places and it's wonderful because she speaks about the place then she speaks about her own experience when visiting it and then she also gives you some tips um, when if you will go there like what practical you need to know or it may be even what to pack or regarding the weather and it's really wonderful and those episodes are quite short so it's a lot of information packed in very um, short episodes so it's something really really amazing so highly recommend you to give these uh, two things a watch and a listen. Another book I finished last month, or well, this month technically, um, is called Trade Your Cares for Calm by Max Lucado. And for those of you who don't know, Max Lucado is a Christian author. And I read a couple books by him previously, and they always managed to cheer me up quite a bit. And especially this concrete book is very lovely, because in all of his book, what he is doing is that he always speaks about certain stories from the Bible, and he also adds uh, the concrete verses from the Bible. However, the um, sort of like reflection or the examples he gives for this concrete text are taken from the real life situation so I found it very beautiful because it's not like you know sometimes when you're trying to read Bible let's say it might seem to be a little complicated but the way he always writes about these Bible stories and different parts of the Bible at least to me it speaks very easily and very nicely and somehow I always find myself being very grateful for this because it somehow manages to reflect my my situation I'm currently going through I don't know how it's possible probably magic up there but um, I always really enjoyed it I did not read that many books by him I think this is my third book I think um, but as I mentioned it always just clicks as it should be so um, it's one of those books I would like to recommend to you if maybe you feel you are going through something difficult and you, you need a little bit of like hope and cheerful encouragement uh, because it's truly really lovely so this is another book I finished and then moving to another one uh, which I have my list here is the book I enjoyed so so much and I did not think I will enjoy it that much and it's called Beyond the Wand by Tom Felton so as probably everyone on this planet, I know the stories of Harry Potter, I love the movies of Harry Potter, but I personally never read these books. I started to read the first book when I was, I think, 11, and I had it in Slovak, obviously, at the time. So I don't know if it was maybe something with the translation, but for some reason I just did not finish the book, and I never ever felt the urge to pick the books up and read them again. So I, until this day, I never read any book by Harry Potter, but I love the movies because obviously it's my childhood and now looking at it now especially from sort of like after studying film and everything like realizing how the movies were done and how you know like all the cast especially like people who created the movie and actors like it's masterpiece honestly and I came across this book by accident I had it as ebook but I'm very tempted to buy it as a physical copy as well because I just loved it, I loved it. And for me Tom Felton was someone who I never really paid that much attention to. Um, 
but as after reading this book it was actually quite funny because the pre-word is written by Emma Watson and I was reading it and it's just a couple pages and she was praising him so much and as I was reading I'm like okay we get it he's your friend just calm down girl but then as I was reading the book I'm like you were not praising him enough <laughs> you know he's such a lovely person at least from from the book and it was wonderful because he was talking about his life it's a memoir again non-fiction I should mention that as well it's a memoir and he is speaking a lot about his childhood how he was growing up the youngest out of four brothers which is quite surprising for me I had no idea and how he was basically born after six years when the last brother was born so each of them were like one year apart approximately and then six years nothing and then he appeared um, and then how they affected his life and then he speaks about his experiences of different movie sets for me especially I was at the beginning of the book I was more curious to read about his experience filming Anna and the King which is a movie I love the most in in the world um, and then eventually he speaks about Harry Potter which obviously takes like a majority of this book and I absolutely love those parts because he's not only talking about his experiences of him as a young actor but also he speaks about the members of the cast and about sort of like even like the filmmaking process and how different scenes were shot even like technically and you know I lived for this stuff so I really enjoyed it and then the last part of the book is also very personal because he speaks how he eventually eventually managed to get to Hollywood and how it affected him regarding drinking and um, it's just very personal point of view I would say about his whole life experience as a young actor and then transitioning to being an adult within this whole environment and then struggling with different you know for example alcohol addiction and how he managed to get out of that and how he continues his life so I absolutely love this book you also have several pictures there well pictures photographs included and it's absolutely wonderful so I'm kind of thinking of buying the physical book but that's the thing like I know I'm probably not gonna read it anytime soon but you know there are just some books you want to have it in your library so I might go and purchase it so if you haven't read this book I highly recommend you to give it a go and especially if you like Harry Potter at least this much either books or movies then go for it because it's stunning Right, I'm moving to the last book and then I might take a little break from filming because I don't know what are they doing but they are getting louder and louder. Um, it's this book called American Baby and as I mentioned I have very last few pages left in this book but I just wanted to include it. This is a book which was gifted to me by lovely Gemma from Gem of Books and it's a non-fiction again and it focuses about the adoption system in America in 60s. And let me tell you, this book is really something. Like, the emotions I had when reading this from the very beginning, mostly, like, anger and, and just sadness and being so like just literally not understanding how some things were able to happen because this book is also written very well because on one hand it's a non-fiction so it gives you a it gives you a lot of facts about you know the whole theme of this book but it also speaks about the story of concrete people about a mother and son who were basically separated right after he was born and then they were searching for each other their whole life so it's not you know some people might say that non-fiction especially when it's just filled with facts might be boring but this is not because every time you start to get like more and more information and you start to feel maybe your brain is a little bit tired or something suddenly the story will enter again and it just keeps you going so the way it was written I think it's really brilliant because it doesn't really feel like reading a uh, non-fiction or it's not boring in any way and it's very interesting and it's it's truly incredible story but very painful I would say so I'm still hoping that the last few pages will cheer me up quite a lot um, but basically the, the premise of this book as I mentioned is about adoption and it's incredible when you imagine what everything did happen in our world because I know it was not something happening only in America you know or maybe it was a little bit different but in general how did we even get to the point when you know when you are unmarried woman and you get pregnant or if you're younger and especially this was happening in Jewish communities so it describes how these women were um, basically taken as someone who doesn't even belong to society anymore and if they got pregnant they had to go to these centers where they had to birth give birth to their children secretly and everyone was like oh we're just gonna pretend that this never happened so there was this whole business with adoption when the unmarried uh, women and young women went to these centers to give a birth and then right after they gave birth the children were taken from them they could not even touch them they could not do basically anything and so many of them were forced to 
sign the adoption papers either they had no idea what are they signing or they were told that oh but you're not gonna be a good mother what can you offer to this child and he's gonna be better somewhere else so they were forced to sign adoption papers and basically give up the children and then right after come back to normal life as nothing happened and later on they got married they had another children but they were still living with either you know like guilt or sadness or literally like the madness of I gave up my child I had to give up my child I'd have no idea where the child is right now and no one even knows about it even my husband might not know that I had a child before so it was absolutely crazy and then so the one point of view is from the mothers and then another one is from the families who sometimes maybe they could not have children or for whatever reason they did not have children and they decided to adopt kids and it, as I mentioned it became this the huge business ar around it that you basically could just come to the place and be like we want a child and they're like, okay here choose you know and take one and buy one so it was absolutely crazy and I'm not gonna be talking too much about this because I could go on for hours but it's really an eyes opening and I'm just hoping that something like this will <laughs> not repeat ever again although in today's society there are quite a lot of things about you know adoption abortion and all of these topics um, but I think it's important to read stuff like this and especially this was very well written so I would highly recommend you if you have any interest in this topic and to be honest I had not like I did not have any interest but I never read anything like this and I'm like it didn't even cross my mind to read something like this and then I heard Gemma speaking about this book and I'm like oh this is actually quite interesting so I'm not a mother I do not work in any adoption or anything yet I found this fascinating so maybe just give it a go and you'll see right my friends and this is all from my non-fiction wrap-up I hope you enjoyed this video please 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 let me know if you read any of these books or if you're planning to read them what you think of them what are your thoughts your comments and let me know in the comments down below and if you enjoyed the video please consider subscribing because it will be lovely to have you here and I will see you with another video very soon. Take care, bye bye!